I'm on my beautiful farm in Maryland, and I am getting ready to take out uh, two little boys hunting tomorrow for ducks, and then three little boys on Saturday for ducks and geese. And I look forward to it. I always loved the youth hunts. My dad did it with uh, my friends. Uh, I did it with all my son's friends, and I'm still doing it up here. I get a real kick out of the young guys and young gals getting their first shooting at the birds like that. This video that I'm putting up here has been up on my private membership site for several years. And it was at the height of uh, Dan Blazarian and people just going after that guy. And just to set the record straight, I explained what happened to Dan. I don't know all the specifics of what happened to Dan at Bud's training, but I know the specifics of what happened to Dan at Bud's training. And I go into the detail here, but I don't follow Dan, but I'm surprised people are still after that guy. I don't... I think whatever Dan has done, he has paid his penance if he did much of anything at all. And uh, I think I explained that in the video pretty well. So uh, here it is, and I would just... Let it go, guys. Let it go. There's, there's, no, there's nothing there. There's just nothing there. See ya. More often than you would think, I get the email from guys who quit, failed Bud's training 30, 40 years ago. And they use these exact words. It's the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning, the last thing I think about when I go to bed at night. Almost to the man. It just gnaws at them and gnaws at them. I've, perhaps I never took that training uh, very serious. Perhaps I really didn't care all that much. I had a really nice home in the Navy and loved every bit of it. And if I hadn't made it through uh, SEAL training, I don't think it would have consumed me, not for 10 minutes. But it does for some guys. And a lot of guys that uh, it still makes me laugh or wonder how what people really think about that training out there when they tell me that uh, uh, I would never quit no matter what. They'd have to drag me out of there before I'd quit that training. They'd have to, you know, and they will. You quitting in SEAL training, which is what most guys do, uh, but that doesn't matter. Not even a little bit. They will throw your ass out. Uh, you can't be a, a guy slobbing around and dragging the boat crew down, the guy that can't run and dragging everything. Your quitting matters little. You've got to be a B student at Bud's. That's all you got to do. you got to be a B student. you got to be good at everything, uh, but you can't be great at some things and suck at others. You can't get a, a bunch of A's and running and swimming and then your mathematics and safety, you're down here getting C's and D's and just weird things like that. That's not the way it works. So that's all you know, Bud's training is looking for is a solid B student, somebody that's good at everything. And uh, I was that. And there's a lot of guys that are really good at a lot of things. Uh, personality comes into play. And they don't, there's no real grading uh, thing in Bud's training for your personality. But when you're grinding people's gears and they can't stand to be around you, Bud's training is uh, draws a lot of bullies uh, to it. A lot of guys don't know anything more than uh, machine guns and bullets and how cool that looks and how cool I'll be when I, I get in that training. And hence it draws a uh, uh, an element of weirdness uh, to it. And guys that are certainly there for the wrong reason. And a lot of them are bullies. They're big, tough guys that already think they should be just given a trident. This is just something that I have to go through and I really shouldn't have to because I got SEAL written all over me. And uh, they're nasty. They're nasty little cusses in there. They bully uh, people when they get in. I remember that uh, immediately in SEAL training, the guys that... And that's what you, when you were there... Uh, going through, that's kind of what you thought was going to get through this training. Wow, he's really big, he's really loud, he's really nasty, and he picks on people, and he's a fucking bully. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's he's going to make it through this training, and they don't. They are the first guys uh, that get bumped out of there, and the instructors help them along the way. Uh, 
that shit's just not really tolerated. That is not what good team players do. There's a lot of other reasons why guys get thrown out. Uh, you can't be sickly. You can't break every time you even look at an obstacle course. You are going to do uh, things in SEAL team that pale in comparison to uh, SEAL training. And if you get hurt every time you go out, that's a real that's a real problem for us. When you're out there, there is no help. You are the help. Uh, and personality comes into a big play. Leadership uh, for the senior guys and uh, personality. And so this Dan Blitzen. Blitzen, Blitzen, Blitzen Creek, whatever his name is, I can't even pronounce it there, uh, talks a lot about uh, SEAL training. And he used to really blame a lot of it on other people, that he got a really shitty deal from the Navy. Let me tell you something about Dan. Dan uh, was that solid B student. He just had one bad area, and that was his uh, personality. And I don't know that you can blame uh, Dan for it that much. I, you know, the SEALs and SEAL training, all, often we always took a lot of pride in the fact that some of the biggest sports athletes that would decide to go there, these Olympic guys, and there were some big ones, big NHL, NFL, things like that that would go and they would fail training. And we took a, a lot of pride in that. Of, uh, they quit. And what it was discovered is they just ran out of mountains to climb. This was just another mountain to climb. I've done all this, so I'm going to go in the Navy and become a SEAL because it's the toughest training there is, and ultimately they weren't in it for the right reason. And I don't know that some of that uh, didn't rub off on Dan. I guess his father was a Vietnam veteran, a Bronze Star. His father was uh, extraordinarily wealthy, and I think Dan played into that. Uh, as well as of uh, in the fact that maybe I just don't even really have to be here. There was no real incentive of a backup plan. I don't think Dan has had to live with backup plans because he would just go back to that wealthy-ass lifestyle if things didn't work out. I know that was always in the back of his mind. And Dan's a uh, extraordinarily wealthy guy. He's a very talented guy. He's a very intelligent guy. Uh, but I think if you see some of the interviews with uh, Dan... Now, Dan fights some demons, and that's uh, his uh, his wealth and his uh, flamboyance, and uh, things catch up to him. He leads a pretty unhealthy lifestyle now with the uh, cocaine and just some other things and the gambling, but, you know, that's Dan, and I wouldn't take anything from him. Uh, he's done very well for himself, but that's what got him out of SEAL training in the uh, in the end. There were some things that happened. I guess Dan went through a couple of hell weeks. That's got to really show some commitment there. So when you look at a sports athlete that doesn't make it through training, you know, because he, he quits really quickly into it, like, oh, shit, man, I ain't going to do this. And then you look at Dan, who goes through two hell weeks, you know, there was some commitment there. But uh, there is a phase, the final phase in SEAL training that is the catch-all phase, and nobody knows it's coming. And when we got back from, finished third phase, got back from San Clemente Island, we were, San Clemente Island was about the worst of the phases. You know, phase one, phase two, they sucked. It sucked even more, but phase three really sucked because you were so tired, beaten up from all that. And then uh, when you go out to San Clemente Island, there's no, there's no weekends off. There's no any of that. And nobody can hear you scream out there. The training really got ramped up hard, tactics, and it's a grind. They really, really laid it to you. Now in the tactics and demolition phase, this is what the SEAL stuff is all about. First phase was a beat-a-thon. Second phase was a diving phase, very technical phase. Now you're doing what SEALs are doing, and this is the tactics, and this is where they're really watching you. And when we came back from uh, third phase... All we had to do was one O course. That was it. One O course. And the rest of the time we spent filling out paperwork, getting our orders to the team, you know, just, just new uniforms, new. Uh, just, it was a great uh, time because we had made it. And uh, 
I don't remember when it was, but we got informed that the guy was my boat crew squad leader guy. He was an ensign, and they threw him out of training. Three days before graduation, he was gone. And it created a lot of outrage uh, with us, the class, because he was very popular. And the instructors didn't explain anything. They didn't pull us in and sit us down and, and say anything. But uh, we were pissed. How could you do that? Well, it didn't take us long until we were in the teams and we realized that why they had done it, because he was a weak leader, because we carried him around a lot, because he couldn't make the decision. He was a great guy. We loved him, because when you're going through buds, I mean, you're everything we got, all of us. And we realized that he sucked as a, a leader. He would not have been a, a good SEAL. And that's where it caught up to Dan. They had given him endless chances. Dan didn't do... Uh, uh, obviously, was a good diver, was a great swimmer, a great runner. He was physically strong. There was just something about him. And they watch and they watch. There's nothing we can really pin on you here except you ain't quite the personality we need. And personality is about everything in SEAL Team. You've got to be able to get along. I understand there was a, a couple of issues, safety violation or something, but if they really liked him, like they did me. They'd have done anything to get him through training, and I certainly had some help. So when he talks about 500 and some days in the SEAL training, okay. Just didn't make the cut. And I don't think he really cares too awful much, uh, but he brings it up a lot. And it, it raises a lot of questions, uh, the way he does it, uh, of getting a shitty deal, uh, you know, a bad deal in SEAL training, dedicating that amount of time to it. But I think you can look at Dan now and, and see why, if you watch any of the interviews, why uh, they, they did not want him there, why he would not have made a good SEAL. And I think Dan can uh, look in the mirror while well, he's intelligent enough to, and go, yeah, I, I, I get it. I understand. I understand why. So uh, that's the first rule that you learn at SEAL training. Is there's nothing uh, nothing fair about the world of special forces. You're not going to win a firefight throwing a rule book at somebody. And that's it. You just didn't make the, uh, you didn't make the cut, bro. I think uh, Dan has enormous potential to go on to some really great things of being a philanthropist and doing some real good for this world with uh, that money. He's just got to tone down a few of the heart attacks uh, he's having and uh, some of the other issues he's got going on. But uh, I wish him well, but it just didn't work out for you in, in SEAL training. And there's a There's a thousand reasons, man thousand reasons why it won't work out thousand every one of us every one of us every single guy has ever worn a trident served in a seal team or underwater demolition team will, would tell you they're lucky they're lucky they got through the, the training when so many other guys did not